Doctors of Reddit, what was your, this person is obviously lying slash faking moment? Patient came in with seizures, non-specific weakness, lightheadedness, and numbness slash tingling in her hands and feet. She gets admitted because of some electrolyte issues, not related to the neuro symptoms. These were corrected later and symptoms persisted. Sure enough on the second day she seizes. As soon as the diazepam is pushed, before the flush is even in, she stops seizing. This happens again three hours later. The third time while she was seizing, we took her hand and tried to drop it on her face twice. Both times she moved her hand out of the way so it wouldn't smack herself in the face. We just stood there until she got tired of shaking. It took about 5 minutes. She left AMA a few hours later. EMS here. Had a patient start seizing in front of the cops after they were pulled over for possible drunk driving. We get there, and patient is still on and off seizing. We get them on the stretcher and in the back of the ambulance. Surprisingly the cop joins us. As I take their arm, the shakes start up again. So I tell them, yo, if you want this medication, I need you to stop so I can start an IV real quick. Patient stops to let me start the line, and once I say I'm done, they start back up. Funniest story of my medical school career. We were rounding on the woods for a teenage son whose parents were in the room. Dad, up, uh, we saw our son tested positive for marijuana, this is clearly incorrect. Attending, there are some false positives, but the test is pretty accurate. Dad, my son is a lifeguard, he would never smoke. Son, yeah. I've never ever smoked, looking scared as duck. Attending, we can order a more sensitive test that will give a more accurate answer. Son, well, I do sit really high up on the lifeguard chair, and I think some of the kids around the pool smoke, so maybe I breathed in some of the smoke while working. Team, frantically ends conversation to leave the room and laugh hysterically. Patient comes in saying she has terrible abdominal pain, 10 out of 10. I say okay. And start to examine her. She immediately starts screaming the moment I touch her belly. But look, I've seen patients in terrible pain, and nobody has ever yelled in pain with their eyes open. She wasn't even tensing or anything. It was a really sad case though, she has a history of coming in saying she was pregnant, when the urine and blood test was clearly negative. In one case she even tried to steal a pregnant patient's urine, she got caught pretty fast. She was on psych follow-up, not sure what the diagnosis was, but my guess would have been Munchausen's. Anyway, we sent her home without pain meds. My second patient was a man with a chronic cough. Asked him, are you smoking? And he says no, examines him, and there's a cigarette pack right in his breast pocket. We have a patient at our primary care clinic who claims to be blind. He always comes in with sunglasses and a white cane. We were always suspicious though. Something definitely seemed off. One day someone followed him out of the building. He walked through our nearly empty parking lot, and down the street a little ways to a car parked out of view of the clinic. He folded up his cane, got into the driver's seat, merged into traffic and drove away. I had a woman come into Tridge in labor and delivery. We ruled her out for breaking her water. She was pissed that she wasn't going to get induced and be delivered. So after I left the room, she flooded the bed, the floor, and herself with tap water. Literally gallons and gallons of water, it was leaking out from under the door. So much water, it was like that scene in Conheads. She said it was her water breaking. Again, quickly ruled her out and told her she needed to go home. She subsequently peed the bed before leaving. Not mine but my mother's, an ER doc at the time. Scruffy guy. Mid 50s, comes in looking for non-specific help. Confused, smelly, dressed in ragged mismatched thrift store suit, clearly homeless and just looking for a bed. Keeps muttering something about quantum, obviously a little off his rocker. Mom decides, might as well give him a work up and teach the residents. Turns out the guy's a near total renal failure, so they give him dialysis. Snaps too. Suddenly coherent. Suddenly sane. Suddenly talking about real actual quantum physics. Turns out he's a math professor. 
some organ problem sent him into a mental tailspin on his way to a conference a month earlier, got off train in wrong city, been wandering the streets ever since, missing and presumed dead. They are not always faking. Had a PT fake a ruptured ectopic pregnancy to get narcotics. Says she was diagnosed with an ectopic at another hospital and given medication to end it. Came into our hospital in extreme abdominal pain, rolling around, yelling, had vaginal bleeding, the whole nine yards. Gave her a bunch of pain medication so we could get an ultrasound. Ultrasound showed nothing. Urine pregnancy test showed nothing. Beta HCG was zero. Turns out she was conveniently on her period, which made the whole thing very convincing. Got records from the other hospital. Patient had been there yesterday but was not pregnant for them, nor was she diagnosed with an ectopic pregnancy. Definitely was a, wow she just made up this entire thing. We had a lovely conversation about all the results. She ended up screaming at me, threatening to sue me for all I'm worth and stormed out. Jokes on her, I'm worth minus 200,000 of student loan debt. My mom had a patient who said she had passed kidney stones at home and needed painkillers. The lady actually brought in the kidney stones as proof. Patients don't usually do this, and the stones were way bigger than people can pass on their own. My mom sent them to the lab, and they came back as geological origin. A K.A. crazy lady picked up small stones from outside to try and get meds. An ex of mine told me a story about a dude that had a window wiper handle stuck up his butt, because he had one laying in the shower, slipped and fell onto it. It never occurred to her that it might have not been an accident. My grandma used to work with a lady at a hospital. Funny enough that would always say she got an on-the-job injury and needed to take a few weeks workman's comp. A doctor there would somehow always give her a note and she would get a free week or two vacation, come back for a month, and do it again, obviously milking the system. One day her boss said, okay, but there's nothing for you to do here on light duty. Usually we'd send you home until you're better, but we're going to have you come in until you're better. But there's nothing for me to do. She said. He told her, I know, bring a magazine or something. It'll be a long day sitting in the break room. She lasted two days and never pulled that stunt again. Doc, do you need to refill your meds? Patient, nope, still taking them. I am asking because I know based off of my prescription that it is time for you to get more. If you don't need more it means you aren't taking them. Obligatory not a doctor post, but when I was a child, I remember my doctor asking me about my diet, and I, as an overweight unhealthy child, responded with the names of vegetables and fruits that we both knew I didn't eat. I'm a therapist, but I do diagnosing if that counts. I had a woman in my office claiming she had multiple personalities. DID is kind of a sticky diagnosis to begin with but that she was claiming that she could talk to different personalities and then bring them out if she needed to. All of this seemed like it could potentially be more of a psychotic disorder or attention seeking. Then she introduced me to her girlfriend who also had multiple personalities. Which they started naming. Most of which were based on candy or Disney princesses. Notably the bad one was called the Beast. Edit, I actually asked her if she had seen the movie Split during out session. She said it was a coincidence. Veterinarian here, for something different. Performed a cruciate repair on a miniature poodle, and of course the dog limped post-op. Came in for radiographs a month later to confirm healing. Looked great, but dog was still limping. Two months later, the owner was furious that the surgery was a waste of a thousand dollars. Threatened to sue, but on examination and re-radiographing the leg I couldn't find a thing wrong. On a hunch. I asked the owner to leave the dog with me for additional tests, that would be of no cost to her, so she went shopping for an hour. During that time, I set up a video camera to record the dog in the kennel run. The moment the dog didn't hear the owner or the car anymore, boom. All four legs working like a charm, dog running around perfectly normal. Called the owner and asked her to return after half an hour, set the camera to record again, and the moment the dog heard the familiar car returning. The limp came back as well. I had a fun few minutes explaining to the owner that her dog was faking the sore leg for attention. Got the usual, oh no. My fur baby schnooky wickums wouldn't do such a thing. 
so I showed her the footage, clearly showing her dog running around fine, as well as showing what happened when her car returned. Instructed her to ignore the dog while it was limping. Limp magically went away after a week of not getting attention for it. A surprising number of people try to fake being unconscious, but there's a simple test for that. Pick up their hand and drop it onto their face. If they smack their own face, they're unconscious. If they move their hand to the side as it drops, they're conscious. I posted a while back, but will post it here again. It wasn't super obvious at first, but after looking into her records it became clear. So this happened a few months ago on my psychiatry rotation in medical school. There was a patient at an inpatient psychiatric facility for suicidal ideation. She constantly insisted that she had a mass on her breasts, and demanded to be physically examined only by male doctors. When the psychiatrist I was rotating and declined to perform a physical exam, she asked me to do it during my daily patient interview. I also declined physical exam, but had a bit of a hunch to check her medical records. It turned out she had an ultrasound done a week before that, found only normal breast tissue without masses. However, apparently this lady had frequented many doctor's offices with various complaints of an unspecific nature, and would usually focus on breasts or vaginal complaints when she visited male physicians offices. We diagnosed her with factitious disorder, formerly known as Munchausen syndrome, and histrionic personality disorder. It seems her goal was mostly attention from medical professionals, she had lots of issues, but we also had to be careful to make sure she wasn't fishing for a lawsuit. Patients like her are why doctors document everything meticulously. Not a doctor, but I am a patient who lied. Before my sobriety I did some doctor shopping. After that got hip, I'd have to go around to urgent cares and stuff. I ended up needing something badly, so went to my GP. I've been going to him for years. Like since I was 18. I told him I was sober, and had tooth pain and back pain and other pains and had tried everything. Against what he was supposed to do, he looked me dead in the eyes and said, both of us know what you're saying right now is complete horseshit. Turns out my doctor was an AA. I ended up leaving after crying for 30 minutes. Got sober within the next 6 months. He goes to my home group and is still my doctor. Called a bar for a seizure. Waitress says she delivered his bill and he suddenly went to the floor having a seizure. Look over at him, and he's laying there flopping his arms and legs around, as he looks his right in the eye and screams over and over, I'm having a seizure. We tell him to stand up so we can take him to the ambulance. He does and starts walking to the door. We tell him to hold up, gotta pay your bill first. Man, was he pissed at us. Waitress tells us he does this all the time. Well, not today. He still took a ride to the hospital though. The hospital has good egg salad sandwiches. When I was a labor nurse, the emergency room sent up a gal who said she was in labor. She was a sturdier lady, so it was hard to tell. No prenatal care. No fetal heart tones. Did an ultrasound. She'd had a hysterectomy. She and her partner insisted we were wrong, because they prayed and knew they were having their miracle baby. Good luck with that ma'am. This person had a long mental health history. I have no doubt that she believed she was pregnant. Not a medical professional, but work security in an ER. Once had a guy come in, announce that he was going to have a seizure then lay down slowly and comfortably in the floor and didn't start seizing until he was sure everyone was looking at him. Then when the nurse, who knew he was obviously faking, said they were going to have to run a tube down his throat, he was suddenly fine. Not exactly faking it, but funny story. When I was working in the hospital, a patient's screen with his vital parameters started showing dangerously low levels of oxygen and blood, which basically means somebody is suffocating in a way. So all alarms go on, and the nurses and one doctor rush to the patient's room while the CPR mode is active. Surprisingly the patient was looking all well and didn't show any blue skin, sign of deoxygenate blood, he was even smiling. So everybody just confusedly went on with their business, except for this one sister that grinned at the old man raising her finger, saying, Oh Mr. Smith, did you hold your breath again to see how fast the oxygen levels drop? And he just started grinning like a 5 year old and nodded. 
One of the funniest moments. Not a doctor, but a hearing aid dispenser in private practice. Had a patient come in for a hearing test, young guy in his mid-twenties, which is already unusual. Main issue is that he's getting noise complaints about his music. Huh? No issues with his ears physically, so I do the hearing test, basically ends up with a profound hearing loss. Weird, because that's basically sign language territory there. I walk behind him and ask him what his plans are for the evening, to which he responds appropriately. Definitely what we call a non-organic hearing loss. He was trying to get the results he wanted to justify being a donk of a neighbor. I'm a dentist. We have a drug tracking program shared with any narcotic prescriber that tells me when patients have filled out what. I just need their name and EOB. I get drug seekers every now and then with real or fake pain, claiming they haven't been taking anything. Quick search shows me the truth. Most people don't know I can do this. Liar, liar, pants on fire. I'm an EMT, if that counts, so here's a good one. About 85% of the calls we receive, at least in my town, are issues where they clearly aren't severely injured, and just think, if I call 911, I'll get into the hospital faster. Pro tip, you still wait like everybody else, unless you're actually dying. Another part of this percentage of people are ones that just want attention slash medication. We had a woman recently that decided that she was gonna have a seizure in the ambulance. A real seizure. Put simply, usually looks like they're just tensing up and twitching in one position. This lady was flailing every part of her body everywhere and trying to spit everywhere. Not only was it clearly fake, but we had to clean up the damn mess she made. We'd usually let it slide, but I pulled out an nasal airway and a lube packet, and said loudly to my partner, we need to stabilize her breathing, I'll put in the airway in a second. Just let me apply the lube so it doesn't tear open her nose like it usually does. The instant I said it, she stopped having her seizure. Unrelated story, but we also had another woman that claimed she couldn't get up after a fall in her house. We arrived to her entire house being locked, so we called through a window that was cracked to see if there was any other way inside besides breaking through her screen. She proceeds to stand up, go to the front door, unlock the door, walk back to where she was, and lay back down. We did a generic checkup, and there was clearly nothing wrong. When she said she didn't want to go to the hospital and we were about to leave, she stopped us and asked us to call Comcast for her, since we are the EMS and are a higher priority. TLDR, fake seizures and faking an injury to have EMS call Comcast for you. 3 year old having tonsil surgery, I run through my usual pre-op evaluation, history, and physical. Parents ensure that she hasn't had anything to eat or drink since the night before. Get her back to the OR, drift her off to sleep, and when I go to place the breathing tube, she vomits basically solid slash completely undigested scrambled eggs and aspirates. Surgery is cancelled, we take her to the ICU. Parents obviously ducking fed her breakfast less right before they came in. Confront the parents. And they basically say they thought we were just being too mean not letting her eat for 8 hours. There is a reason we ask you not to eat for a period of time before surgery. It is not because we just like being donks. Listen to us, please. I've tested the hearing of a few kids, like 10 to 12 years old, pretending to be deaf in one ear. All you do is turn on your microphone and talk in the deaf ear at a quiet level, and ask them a question about something they care about. Like young boys, for example, always fall for it when you ask them, what video games do you play? At 20 decibels. Works every time. We had a patient come in on a worker's comp case with severe injuries to the chest. He states that while working in a grocery store parking lot, a female deer spots him from a distance and decides she wants him. Once she gets close to him, she kicks him in the chest several times and then headbutts his kneecaps in. Once he's on the ground she stomps on his chest and head. He wakes up several hours later and immediately comes to us. Not only was his story completely ridiculous, but he didn't have a single mark on his body. No bruising, no swelling, no broken bones. Just nothing. He rated the pain at a 10 out of 10 without a single scratch on his body. Needless to say, he got his claim denied. Not a medical professional. 
I was thought to have been making my symptoms up. That it was all in my head. Two years and a mess load of doctors later. Turns out I have a muscle disease. So apparently I'm really bad at having a disease. I know even the doctor that found it, thought I was faking it. He apologized profusely and sent me to a specialist that deals with rare muscle diseases. Pediatrician here, so my patient was younger, and I think influenced by mom. This 13 year old kept getting admitted for complaints that never made sense. Lack of smell. Dizziness. Seizures that would happen while he was walking slash running. Heart felt hot, etc. Every specialist under the sun had seen him and cleared him. He had every test and imaging study you could think of. There was a lot of social stuff going on, and this was a hard family to discharge. He'd get admitted, we'd run a hundred tests, and as soon as we were about to discharge him, some new symptom would come up. The worst was once after I had already written the discharge orders and the nurses called to let me know the patient had gone blind. I was grouchy that day and wasn't having it. I went in with a rolled up piece of paper. I checked his pupils. I used a Snellen. I went through the whole rigmarole. Then when I was talking to his mother, without looking I threw the paper at him hard and fast. He yelped and dodged it. I told mom that they were going home. To be honest, I still feel a little guilty about it, and don't know what the right thing to do was.